How did the new agreement of diplomatic relations come about? Well, we, we had been trying to uh, establish diplomatic relations for many years with mm -hmm. Somalia, mm -hmm. and it was difficult, mm -hmm. uh, even more so since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, uh, however, um, in September 2013, I actually was in Brussels for the conference, a new deal for Somalia, and then I met your president and the then foreign minister, Adan. Mm -hmm. And we had agreed that we should start the ball rolling to establish diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. Nothing much happened, but then we met again in New York, in, in the United Nations General Assembly, mm -hmm. and we promised that we'll follow that up. But what actually, what actually um, made it happen was that we met the Somali authorities again in Brussels when there was the European Union Africa Summit, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a commitment that this should start happening. And we actually worked through our embassies in uh, in Brussels, mm -hmm. to the to the to the uh, with the result that when I was in Athens, um, um, when last month, um, we signed a joint communique between Malta and and, and Somalia, it was signed by your ambassador in in, in Brussels, mm -hmm. um, promising to to set up diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. And then I met your your foreign minister, the new one, um, uh, in London. He was attending the conference on sexual violence and conflict, mm -hmm. and uh, I met him there, and, and he knew about the agreement that we had that we had signed, and uh, we hope we we'll take it from there. All right, uh, as you know, most of immigrant people who arrived in uh, organizing from Somalia, whatever it will agreement and have immigrants already, so to arrive in Malta. Let me put it this way: We're not trying to establish diplomatic relations with Somalia simply because of the refugees. Mm -hmm. We have other concerns. Mm -hmm. I mean, since 2008, we have always been concerned as well with the with the question of piracy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was no functional government, and there was a lot of piracy. And Malta was um, uh, involved since since a number of years now, mm -hmm. even with with uh, the Dutch Navy in patrolling the coasts of Somalia simply because um, we have a lot of, of ships which are registered under the Malta flag mm -hmm. and we have our own, our, our own interests. Besides that, we are also involved in, in training um, Somali military, military personnel mm -hmm. um, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a program which is, which is run by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Besides, we also have people in London where, where there is the, the um, uh, headquarters of uh, EU um, uh, NAFOR, which is the, the and scheme looking after the the uh, patrolling of the of the coasts, but besides that, um, we also look forward to, to the new Somalia, um, Somalia which we hope will 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 start, you know, regaining um, democracy and stability. There is a lot of prospects. I mean, uh, a large a large um, uh, workforce which could be educated, knowing full well that for the last 20 years. There were practically no schools, most of them were closed. But we know that there is this big drive for Somalia to, to, to find its place again in the, in, the, in the democratic world. So our interests are, are you know, looking forward um, in the future. The immediate concern, the immediate benefit, however, would be for us to cooperate in, in dealing with the large number of Somali uh, immigrants who are coming to our shores. Um, since 1998, we have received something like 7,000, 7,200 of Somalis. Uh, at the moment, we have something like 400 uh, in, 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 de in detention up to now. There are about um, uh, 200, I think, uh, who are free. But there is no way of recognizing or of, of identifying who these people are. So one of the things which would benefit from if we get this cooperation from this agreement would be for somebody to help us to identify who are the real Somalis mm. and who are those who claim to be Somalis. Mm. I mean, uh, with us it's very difficult to identify um, whether you're Somali or an Ethiopian or an Eritrean. So if we have expertise, if we have people from the embassy in Brussels who would help us to identify these people and then even help us to, to to, if these, these legal immigrants 
um, do not qualify for refugee status, mm -hmm. then they will have to be issued with, 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 uh, with documents mm -hmm. from your country. And that has to be done um, with the intervention, with the help and the cooperation of, of an embassy from the, the country which will um, be ready to accept back um, the, uh, the illegal migrants. Okay. Uh, Malta, has been part of the European Union ever to uh, war against the Somali pirates. How are this operation now is going? Which operation? The operation against the pirates. Against pirates, as I said, I mean, this has no, been... Continuing. It is continuing, it is continuing. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, we've sent, um, I think it's the fourth batch of military personnel who we have um, sent together with the naval authorities of, mm. of uh, the Netherlands mm. um, on board one of the ships to be there doing doing um, the uh, the patrolling of the shores. Mm -hmm. um, it has been it has been ongoing, mm -hmm. and as I said, we have our own interests over there because of the of the of the number of Maltese of ships mm -hmm. flying the Maltese flag, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a very a very um, worthwhile experience okay. for our military personnel because they gain. A certain, a certain experience on board a foreign ship, but at the same time doing, doing uh, work which they not normally do in Malta. But that is very, very important for us. Okay. Uh, the government of Malta has recently part delegate financial help to Somalia and also engaged to training for Somali military. What support has been given to Somalia? Yeah, we have, we have as you rightly say, we have, we have um, actually participated, we're still participating in the United Nations uh, program for training of military, military personnel from Somalia. Mm -hmm. um, that is something which we're doing on a, on a small scale. Malta is a very small country, as you know. Um, at the same time, we have also participated in the conference in New Deal for Somalia mm -hmm. and promised a very small sum, I have to admit, compared to the millions of other countries, ours is very small, but it is significant, because we have promised to, to, to give 50,000 euros uh, every year for three years um, towards this fund, which is helping, which is helping Somalia to, to find its feet. Uh, European Union and international human rights criticize immigrant detained here in detention when they reach Malta. What's the plan of the government? The plan of government is I, the time in detention. Mm. And secondly, also to um, try to make the conditions within the detention, and even in Malta, better for the people who, who, who acquire, who qualify for refugee status or for humanitarian protection. The point is that when you get this large number of people coming, not only Somalis, coming from, where, from wherever they are coming, there is always the concerns for security. You don't know who that person who's coming as an illegal immigrant, who he is, where he comes from, and what are his intentions. So the first thing to do is to screen these people and to see that they are not roaming the country and, and having freedom of movement without having been screened for security reasons. Now, we normally keep them, used to keep people in detention for even up to 18 months. Mm -hmm. And I have to agree that it is, it is, it is frustrating for somebody who has run away from, from terrible circumstances in his own country, take the danger of crossing the desert, and crossing the sea, and then ending up, ending, ending up in a jail. In a jail. We, we agree that is not the idea. However, over these last years, the period of detention has decreased a lot. Normally, I'm told that, that within six months, seven months, many are released. And the, 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 the thing which made it more efficient is the fact that um, the, the board which is um, examining these legal migrants to decide whether they qualify or not for refugee status or humanitarian protection um, is being more efficient and is, is, is moving fast. Um, uh, faster than, than they used to do in the past. The question is um, that if people qualify for refugee status, it's no problem. They are released because they are a refugee or they are enjoying humanitarian protection. The problem is with people who do not qualify for refugee status. So the option is 
you have to release them because you're going to keep them, you know, more than 18 months in detention. But what to do with them? The point is, these people are not um, uh, accepted as refugees, so they have to be returned to their country. Now, there, is, there are two ways of doing that. They have to either to go back voluntarily, or they have to be forced to go back. Now, forced repatriation is not something we like to do. But voluntary repatriation, we even had schemes uh, whereby we offered these people a sum of money so that they could go back to their country. Um, we, 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 put, we take them back to their country. Um, obviously, the government provides transport. And they go back with a sum of money to, to start some small business. That worked in the past. Now it's not, it's, not, it's not working that much. At the moment, um, Somalis, we have, um, um, as I said, to be repatriated, there are something like 58, 60. And there were about nine who actually um, accepted um, assisted voluntary uh, repatriation. Now, we are also in, in agreement or trying, in, in trying to, to discuss with uh, European Union countries three things. One of them is the fact that we have to change Dublin to uh, meaning the conditions whereby if you, if you land in Malta, um, the first time you arrive in Europe, you have to remain in Malta. That is not acceptable. Secondly, um, we have to agree with them that, that um, repatriation could be joint repatriation, meaning that, for example, if a plane is coming down, going down, going to, 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 to take back Somalis say to, 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 to Somalia, um, and there is place on the plane, they can come to Malta, take Somalis from Malta who are to be repatriated, and that will be, will be repatriated. And thirdly, what we're doing is that we're, we're working, you know, practically around the clock with European Union authorities to monitor, first of all, the arrival of people on, on the boats, and secondly, to agree on the fair distribution within Europe of those people who qualify for asylum. Meaning that we are saying that if somebody qualifies for asylum as a refugee or humanitarian protection, okay. um, his protection should not be only limited to Malta, but that would give him the freedom to go all over Europe as a, as a, as a, as a refugee. Mm -hmm. We're still working at that. What support do they give European Union, Malta government to help the immigrants? The European Union is giving Malta <coughs> money. There is, there is a, an amount of money, which is, which is the refugee fund, which um, the European Union gives to Malta to help us with the problem. But this problem is not a problem which can be solved by simply giving money. It's not a question of money. Money does help. Money does help. But Malta being a small country, you cannot create the opportunities. You cannot create the facilities. You cannot create the, the future that these people have crossed the desert and the sea looking for. Many of you have come to Europe to find the opportunity to, to have a career, to develop, to have a family, to settle down, and to, to have a good future. Malta is small and cannot possibly absorb all those immigrants that eventually end up in Malta. We are you know, fortunate this year that the numbers are still very, very low because the, the Italy is, uh, has launched a program called Mare Nostrum, and this program is practically picking up everybody from the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. Up to now, Italy has picked up um, something like 50, 55,000 mm -hmm. illegal migrants crossing the sea, mm -hmm. and who knows how many lives have been saved mm -hmm. because they are doing an excellent job. This year, because of that uh, Mare Nostrum, we don't have many refugees. But if we have, like we had last year, over 2,200, I mean, Malta cannot absorb all those numbers. We can absorb a certain amount. We talk of integration. We talk of assimilation. We talk of, of, of taking in a certain number. But studies show that we cannot take more than 200, 250, practically, um, every year. So that they become part of the Maltese community, they, they start participating, they get a job, they have a family, they settle in Malta and they become part of the Maltese community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we cannot absorb all those numbers. And this is what we are to telling the European Union repeatedly. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of money. You give us the money. But the money helps to have, to have 
the facilities where to keep the legal migrants. It helps to 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 um, give them better attention, better better food, more subsidies. But it doesn't mean you cannot buy the future. We cannot create opportunities for all these people to stay in Malta and settle in Malta. That is absolutely out of the question, simply because of the size of the country. Uh, the last question is, uh, what is the new agreement between, um, in diplomatic between Somalia and Malta? Well, the new agreement doesn't say much. Let's be honest about it. It's not something out of this world. It is only a joint communique um, expressing the wish that we have to work together, first of all, obviously, um, wishing each other the stability, the security, and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the prosperity that one would wish every country to have, because the more Somalia is stable and, and secure, the less people leave Somalia. And this applies for every country in, in Africa or other you know, Asian countries where, 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 where refugees or immigrants leave from. I mean, so we are always committed to help countries like Somalia to find its feet in, in democracy and, 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 and government. The communique itself says that we will work together to, to, to attain these, uh, these objectives, but the most important thing, the, 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 the last part of the communique says that we are um, promising each other to work together to start, first of all, building diplomatic relations and helping each other in, in the problems that we face. Um, uh, with us, it is the question of immigration, but obviously from the Somali side, they would obviously um, want us to, to be on their part, to vote um, uh, in their favor and to do all we can to help Somalia find, find its feet against terrorism, against, against lots and lots of things. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.